Happy new comic book day, webheads! Well, kind of. It's Tuesday night where the new DC comic books come out. And I didn't stop at the store yet, but I wanted to record this portion now. And in the meantime, I'm at Outbacks waiting at curbside to get my food. I'm super excited to eat this dinner, and I want to know... Guys, what's your favorite restaurant to go to when you go out to dinner? So leave me those comments in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the hall. Happy new comic book day officially, guys. I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. Guys, this is Spider Slayer's comic book haul. This is episode 588, the video series where each and every week, of course, I show you what I pick up at my LCS which is Comic Central, located in the city of Sanford. So if you guys are ever in that area, make sure you stop by. Tell them Mike Spider Slayer sent you. You'll get a mysterious black bag, and inside will be the comics that you purchase. Guys, they got great customer service, great comics, all kinds of awesome stuff. So here we go. Mysterious black bag. There's a lot of stuff in here, guys. But let me tell you, okay? I have very little time to film this, edit this, and get it on YouTube. So we might go a little bit quickly here today. So here we go. There's that stack. You can see on the bottom, there's some bags and boards there. I needed quite a few. All right. So here we go. And there's a new comic here that is added to the list that I'm very excited about. So I'll put those bags and boards to the side and let's get started. The first book that we're gonna be talking about is Void Rivals. This is issue one, the newest book from Robert Kirkman. Here you get to see it's a one in 10 variant. I paid $5.99 for this. I'm very excited. Robert Kirkman is the first independent writer that I truly got into with The Walking Dead. And I loved Invincible. He's done other projects uh, most recently, like Oblivion Song, and uh, he did Firepower. So now this is the next thing. So totally excited about that. All right. And then we go on to something epic. This is issue two. Uh, really love the first issue. We got to see the exploration of this kid's mind of how he sees things, how he sees all these imaginary characters and they come to life and he gets to talk to them and interact with them and uh, just a crazy uh, type of condition that he has it's very rare his mom is sick I guess you got to see that at the end of the last issue but the characters that are on the pages of this book are very creative the imagination here is so awesome uh, look at this right here man again it's so cool so I can't wait to see how this whole story pans out here all right, and then let's see, we got The Nasty. This is issue three. Really excellent book as well as we get this kid who has a slasher uh, character as his imaginary friend and they're trying to put together this um, horror festival to save this um, old VHS like blockbuster store. Uh, really cool supporting cast that's in this comic as well. The main character kind of reminds me of Mike from Stranger Things. Pretty interesting book, something different out there in case you're trying to get away from the superheroes. All right, so speaking of superheroes, let's get into some of them. We wind up having Green Lantern. This is issue two. I loved Green Issue, issue one. It had Carol Ferris. It had obviously Hal Jordan making his retur return back uh, to the... Uh to the city and uh, he's looking for a job and then he comes across like this manhunter that's wearing like this the robotic armor or whatnot uh, I loved it I thought it was great I thought it was a good jumping on point for a lot of new readers that maybe have not read Green Lantern or read Green Lantern in a long time here we have Kilowog in the issue which I think is going to be a lot of fun because he's he's comical in itself right so yeah Green Lantern issue two and when with that, we wound up getting the variant cover. Uh, I thought this variant looked really awesome. Uh, I get to see like uh, planes in the background, explosions in the background, just intense, right? All right, and then we wound up getting uh, Battle Chasers. So issue 10. Uh, never read an 
issue of Battle Chasers, this is the J. Scott Campbell variant that kind of caught my eye with it. People were telling me it's really good and it's a book that's been out in the past. So it looks like I'm going to have to find like a trade. Uh, if you guys know where I can get that trade or it, who makes the trade so it's easier for me to find, let me know in the comments below. Holy crap, there's a whole page for the story so far. And then there's a whole page for the entire cast of characters. So I have no idea what this is, but looks looks pretty good. I like the art. Uh, the main character here, she looks great. The colors are bright and vibrant as well. Again, I know nothing about Battle Chasers. I didn't even look inside this book. I just love the cover art here. All right, next we'll go on to a little bit of Marvel, it looks like. Uh, we wind up getting X-23 Deadly Regenesis issue four. This book is fine. There's nothing like super spectacular or special about it, uh, but I think it's a story that takes place in the past, all right, that deals with Laura and she got captured by this character by the name, I think her main name is like Kamora or something like that. And she wants X-23 to do her bidding. Actually, yeah, that's trying to make sure if that was her name or not. but. Anyway, she just wants to Laura to do her bidding and, uh, you know, to, uh, I guess, fight for her and stuff like that. We got introduced to a new character by the name of Haymaker. There's a lot of violence in this book. It's not bad. It's not perfect either, right? It's just, it's just kind of there. And if you love the character, you might like this book. All right, and then we have clobbering time. This is issue four. Uh, this continues this story, and this time it has Dr. Doom inside of it. So if you're not familiar with this book at this point, it's just Ben Grimm teaming up with different characters in the Marvel Universe, and they have... Um, they just have different interactions with each other. I think that's what really makes the book. Like one book we had like Iron Man in it. One book you had like Wolverine in it, right? And last book you had Doctor Strange and this time you have Doctor Doom. And so there's Doom sitting on his throne uh, and whatnot. And I, I don't know what to expect, but you got this going on. Check out that art, man. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I'll go for that. It's fun. The artwork is different. And again, if you love team up books like Marvel 2-in-1 or Marvel comics presents or something like that this is this is has that feel to it okay and then we have cosmic ghost rider this is issue four this book has been very enjoyable i think the artwork is really good the thing that's going on in this story is that there's two cosmic ghost riders and uh, they're kind of feeding off of each other's energy and we don't know who's going to live and who's going to survive but again, it looks great. Um, the story is not overly complicated. And you're trying to find out like who's the real Frank Castle and who's the fake one. Who's going to live? Who's going to die? And it's just, it's been really entertaining. And Valkyrie's been in this comic as well, which is cool. And she can kind of predict like who is going to die. Because when you see, when she looks at people, she has like this big ball of death. And if it's really huge, they're close to dying. So interesting, different. I like it. I'm surprised uh, by this book by Stephanie Phillips. So we'll see how it continues. All right. So I talked about Battle Chasers before, and then I wound up getting the uh, J. Scott Campbell variant cover. I think it's a gorgeous character. Um, she's very voluptuous here, and it definitely this attracts you to that book. Uh, and it's it's interesting because she has like a she's like a pirate. It looks like, and she's trying to collect money. I, I don't know. Again. I'm going to have to read this to see what this is about. All right. And then when we talk about Void Rivals, I wound up getting two other covers here. I wound up getting this cover. I think this was the main cover. And so we're going to check out the interior artwork in this book. It actually looks kind of cool. Just firsthand look at it. Right. So this will probably be the first book I read because I obviously it's for worthy ones. And I heard there's some spoilers on the Internet going on in this uh, comic as well. So looking forward to that. And then I wound up getting this one. So I wound up getting three separate covers of this book because, you know, I have that much faith in Robert Kirkman. There's sometimes there's his stories just really take off. Right. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, and then I wound up getting The Amazing Spider-Man issue 121. Uh, don't own this book, so the best thing I could do is get a facsimile edition. Again, the cool thing about this is they have all the ads in it, so it's like you have the real issue, except it's in magazine format, you know, glossy pages. So definitely excited to read this story. Never read it before. Um, because I don't think I have a collected edition of it or, or omnibus. 
So yeah, the, you know, they don't make Spider-Man like this anymore, but yeah, totally excited about that one. All right, so speaking of Spidey, then we wind up getting Spider-Man India. This is issue one. So we're gonna see what this series has to offer for Spider-Man fans. I know people might not pick this up because they're tired of like Edge of Spider-Verse or different types of spider characters. But here's the first hand look at the art guys and it looks good. You got a Mysterio in there. Looks like you got regular Spider-Man in there as well. We got some light coloring that's going on in this color as well. It almost looks like a, a pastel or a watercolor type of style. And then here is a nice little pinup page of Spider-Man India. All right, guys. So now real quick, I just want to give a quick shout out to my Facebook group. It's a community that I have put together for people to share everything and anything when it comes to comic books. And if you're interested in joining, it's absolutely for free, guys. Just go on to Facebook, search for the group, Comic Book Corner 2.0 webheads unite and once you follow by the rules and you answer the questions i will prove you to be in the group and uh you'll be part of a awesome community and guys you never know when you could get shouted out on future halls just keep it respectful all right so continuing on we have venom lethal protector this is issue four best Venom book on the stands today. Even though the last issue of Venom wasn't too bad, uh, we get to see Eddie Brock come back to the main Earth. Uh, I, I don't know, he's fighting his future self again, so it's kind of weird. But nevertheless, David Michelini is the one that writes this comic book, and it has all the vibes, old school vibes of old school Venom. Even Doctor Doom is in this comic, and he is the Doctor Doom that you always expect when you want to read a comic book, right? It just looks good, man, and it is a fun read. Definitely recommend this book, guys. Venom Lethal Protector 2, issue 4. All right. And then we got some more uh, independence. We got Queen of Swamps. Is that what this is? This is bursting from the pages of Barbaric. Oh, <laughs> Queen of Swords, issue one. This is coming from the pages of Barbaric, guys. So remember, I've been talking about Barbaric and they had introduced all of the supporting cast characters and now they have their own book. So I'm curious to see if this is going to be a fun like the Barbaric series or this is going to be a drag. I don't know. Some of the characters are all right. I like Soren. She was the main character or the main supporting character. I don't know about all these other chicks, but we'll see what it has to offer in here. Um, here is something well, I can't show you that there's a lot of like uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of banging going on in this book here okay here we go we got this going on that will definitely capture your attention when you read this book first thing and there's some more of the artwork right there so pretty hefty book as well Queen of Swords issue one all right then we got a book from Image Top Cow this is Haunt You To The End issue one I think that's what it's called Haunt you to the end. Yes, it's kind of messed up by the, like the old school VHS like lines and stuff like that. That's a creepy looking cover, man. Is this is a horror book, and I love horror books, so I can't wait to see you know what this one is about. I put it on my FOC because a lot of the times horror books just get me excited. This is the same artist that did Bunny Mask. So if you guys did read Bunny Mask, you're gonna be I think artistically invested in this book. So looking forward to that one. All right, let's talk about a book I do know. This is Gunslinger. This is issue 21. Always a solid book. It looks like Gunslinger is going to be in what he's going to be in trouble here because he still had those angel wings and it's affecting him. Lee, it's affecting him. <laughs> yes, talk. It's affected him physically. There we go. And it's taking a toll on him and he has to get that spell removed permanently. Here's some of that Brett Booth artwork that you can expect. Always looks great. I'll say that Brett Booth is on top of his game when it comes to uh, Gunslinger Spawn. So really good story overall. This book winds up on my pull list all, all the time and i said i wasn't going to read it but issue two was a little bit better this is the giant kakju this is issue three where we have this giant monster that has come ashore he's come during mating season you get to see him screw a whole bunch of buildings and uh he lets off these pheromones and people are just loving life before they die and now we wind up getting a scientist that has to stop this creature and uh yeah so 
he has a bus for a condom or something. I, I don't know what's going on, man. It's, it's, it's just weird, dude. There's a lot of action in this book, but it's just something completely different. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, issue three. Okay. So, next, we're going to go on to some more um, spider books here. We have Extreme Venom Verse. This is issue three. Uh, I love this cover. This is the anti venom cover. Looks great here, really pops. And then let's see, we've got some of the interior artwork. We got some new venom like creatures once again being introduced. And you never know which one is going to, you know, take. And it looks like maybe we'll get more of the story of where these venom creatures are going, right? So here's some more of that artwork. All right, and then we got this other variant cover where we get this weird one that looks like some kind of bride or is wearing some kind of dress or skirt or towel on its head. I don't know, it, it looks cool though. So we got that one. And then I got this book, the Dead by Daylight 5 book. So this is comes with a code that you can use for the game. And I never played Dead by Daylight. I just thought it looked cool. I'll probably open it, maybe read it. And uh, I don't know, that's cool. So we'll see. Carnage Reigns, part five of seven. This is issue 14 of the series. Overall, great book with, with you know, Cletus Cassidy being this crazy Carnage symbiote that's attached to some Stark armor. Uh, and he's part of a symbiote. It's really weird in my opinion. Like, whatever happened to the day of just Cletus Cassidy just being him in Carnage? I just feel like it's a little bit over the top. There's a lot going on. He's possessing all these people. Um, he controls them all. It's weird. And you know what's even more weird? We got this um, the Sentinel thing going on in a lot of comics right now. So if you see these Sentinels in the comics, it's because of the Iron Man book, we wind up seeing Fei Long, who is an enemy of Tony Stark right now, okay? He's stolen, like, Stark tech. He found it to create these Sentinels, and he used Iron Man tech. And now he's trying to create these Sentinels to make himself look good, and having these Sentinels save people and stuff like that. And he used them in the X-Men book as to set up the X-Men as them doing wrong and creating bad and the Sentinel saving the day. But it's crossing over between Iron Man, it's crossing over between this, this event and X-Men. So it's all over the place and I think it's gonna have to do with the fall of X. So, interesting. All right, then we got a new, another, uh, new number one here, Black Panther issue one. Not a huge Black Panther fan, but I usually try at least the first or second issue when we get a new series. Here we got a new suit when it comes to Black Panther. What's going on in his world? I don't know. Um, but it definitely looks good. <laughs> I don't know if he's king anymore or not king. You can leave those comments down below. A lot of dialogue in here, probably catching up the reader of what's going on with him. But yeah, we'll see what it has to offer. All right, and then we wind up getting The Amazing Spider-Man issue 27. Love this cover with Dr. Octopus as he's like spitting all over the place. Great page right here, great page. See, this panel right here is better than all of Amazing Spider-Man issue 26. That right there, why? Because it's got Spider-Man kicking Shocker's ass, which I love the Shocker, and it's got Felicia on there, and it's drawn beautifully by Ed McGuinness. I mean, really good stuff, okay? Let's see more of that art right here. Well, he's sleeping. No more action, he's sleeping some more. <laughs> there we go, there's Dr. Octopus. I like that stuff, man, this looks good. This looks like more of a Spider-Man comic to me than I have seen in a while. So, good stuff there. Hopefully this book turns itself around. Then we got the Iron Man, the Invincible Iron Man cover for Amazing Spider-Man, issue 27. But wait, there's more guys. Last week, I got a whole bunch of Amazing Spider-Man comics. They're still right here sitting on my desk, right? And I got a couple more to add to that this week. So I wound up getting The Amazing Spider-Man issue 244. This is the third Hobgoblin, right? Looks like a high grade copy to me. I paid $12 for this. Maybe a little tick here and there. It is a newsstand edition as well. Love this cover. I definitely have this book for sure, but this is a higher grade. 
All right, and then we wound up getting uh, issue 189. Uh, this is a nice high grade comic as well. There's in a mylar, but it looks absolutely phenomenal from 1979. What a great looking comic right here. Again, another book to add to my Spider-Man collection. That was one of my goals this year, was to find all the earlier issues of Amazing Spider-Man. I'm doing quite well. Iron Man is in that goal as well too. And hopefully I can collect more. I'll be out of town next week, guys. I'll be in South Carolina, uh, visiting other comic shops, hopefully on new comic book day. So you might see a different type of haul next week. So hopefully you guys will join me for that. Until then, I'm going to leave you guys more videos to click on right here. And guys, as always, keep buying, keep collecting. But more importantly, always read your comics. Happy new comic book day.